Hi. It's possible to learn Kafka in mainstream with fun. Can I use a Let's Drive to teach Kafka nicely and funly? Welcome to build your own lead race game with Kafka, where we will try to show you that yes, it's possible to learn Kafka with fun. My name is Igor Souza. I'm currently a software engineer in a data engineer team. I have a good experience in development, especially in the big data scenarios and uh, big data ecosystem. I'm being active in a maker community for a long time. And uh, at IGFA Souza, you can find me in all social networks and email and my blog as well. So everything starts with this picture. Uh, similar picture, uh, it's shown everywhere and people try to explain uh, streaming or event streaming. So the events came and go for a, a data structure that is an array or a pipe or a, a band or whatever you want to call that you can append the elements and you have a sequence and then you can read from begin to the end. And of course you can read an index and you can put this in a data warehouse. You can do some kind of updates. You can search, Elasticsearch, search, or things like that. Uh, you can use for ETL and then you can put the result and create a cache. And of course you can process even in memory or even on fly. And then the output can be another streaming and so on. So people use this picture to say streaming is a process of data in motion. Streaming is the data that is continually generated by different sources. Streaming is the continuous high speed transfer of a large amount of data from a source system to a target. But uh, if you look just the data stream itself, the green uh, square in the center, so you have the sequence of the, the records. Of course, you have the, the concept of producer and consumer, the blue and the orange box. Blue can be more than one. So you produce data, you append them in the data structure. You have more than one consumer that can read and parallelize of it. But if you have a look just the data stream, data just the, the middle part, and you have a maker vision like myself, you're going to see something like that. I'll let's try. So can I use a let's try for teaching Kafka or data stream concepts with fun? What I can do with that? So first thing that we are going to need, it's a Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi started in 2012. And when they started, they advertised that it was the smaller computer around the world. So since 2012 until nowadays, there is a lot of versions. They grow up a lot. There is the Raspberry Pi Zero that costs five dollars, and then there is a Raspberry Pi Four with eight gigs of RAM that's around seventy dollars uh, or eight seventy-five dollars ish. So, and then you have a lot of difference in the middle: more memory, less memory, more powerful, and things like that. The Raspberry Pi has the concept of the GPIO. So the GPIO is general port input output that you can connect things. And of course you can put sensors, lights, LEDs, and things like that. And you can use this on the code for turn on, turn off machines and things like that. The Raspberry Pi, as I said, is a com full computer need uh, operational system. And the last version, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation disponibilized the Raspberry Pi OS usually to be called the Raspberry. They, they changed the name one year ago or something. And then, of course, there is already a, a 64 beach version. It's already came with Java 11 and things like that. They continue supporting the 32 versions. And then there is uh, other Linux flavors, Ubuntu, uh, Oracle Linux, and so on. There is the Android versions as well. There is the Android of Things, a Google project that uh, for programming in Kotlin and things like that. And then the concept of hat. So the hat is a hardware that connects on the GPIO in the sense that you don't need soldering anything and then fits there and you can use it. It's just plug and play. So one of the hats that are on the market is that one. So Blink is from the Blink LEDs. It's from Primoroni uh, provided. And then you have like some LEDs that you can turn on and off and you can put this in Raspberry Pi. So you can end up with something like that. So here I have five Raspberry Pi, and each one has the blink head. And I can use these LEDs for 
try to teach it, but event streaming or streaming or Kafka. So each one can be a node, each one can be a top key or maybe a partition. Of course, there is similar projects outside, people using this for teaching Docker, Apache Spark or Apache uh, Akka and several other ideas. So a picture here that shows like you have a node, a master, or can be the leader, can be can teach you concepts of replications, any other concepts. I can do some simulations, and then I have the Raspberry Pis turn on, turn off the lights. The lights can be a new node, can be an element, can be a register, a record, and things like that. And can I play with simulations? So like at the website. So you can find it if you Google. Kafka visualization software, maybe you're going to find an easy way. So I can try to do things like that. So showing the process of consuming the data, a number of nodes, replications, and things like that. Another concept that I can try to play is the, the replication or the load balance. So here I have four nodes. Let's say that I have four different nodes, green, red, yellow, and blue. So if, for example, first one fails or get out, so everything that is on that node is going to be rebalanced for the others. And then if it is back, then rebalance again. One thing that we can try to do is when the node fails, I can hold a little bit of time and I don't do the rebalance. It can be like five, maybe 10 minutes. And then if in, in that time I come back with the node again, I can just read it. I save the data, for example, in an object store in a cloud provider. And then when the node, or it can be in Kubernetes as well. And then when the node come back, I check if that value exists and then I reuse it. And then I don't have the rebalance. So I can do these simulations using the pies and the heads and on and off the lights. And I can explain a lot of concepts. Other kind of heads that we have in the market is on the left side, we have the sensor head and on the right side is the rainbow head. So sensor head, there is a lot of sensors, but he has a eight to eight LED matrix. And then I can use this for teach as well. So I turn on, turn on the LEDs, it's the same idea. And on the right side, I have the rainbow head. So the picture here is eight by eight, but there is version with 16 by 16 and 32 by 32 as well. And I can create uh, things like that, for example. So here is a tic-tac-toe game. Anyway, just showing they have two players. And then I have the tic-tac-toe on the LEDs as well. So I can use the Kafka for uh, create the multiplayer. So the, the player one and the player two are playing. And all the information go to a Kafka top key. And then I can read from the top key for sure. The other thing that I can do is the reply or play again. So all the data that the producer generates go for a Kafka top key. Here can be player one and player two, just using WebSocket for control who is playing in a web application. It can be Micronauts, uh, Spring, or Quarkus, or whatever. And then I can have the top key, and then I use that thing for consume and build the, the, the uh, dashboard or build the, the game itself on the LEDs. And I can have this for a specific time. So then if when I finish the game, I can just run the consumer again and replay the game and I can see what's happened. So other things that I can do with the sensor hat is, as I said, there is a lot of sensors. So pressure, humidity, temperature. On the right side, I have the GFX uh, hat. It's just a, a LCD. So then I can press, I have it three buttons on the bottom, one and two and three. I have the buttons here as well, it's just touch. And then I, what I did is I press one, I, I see humidity, here I see temperature, and here I see pressure, something like that. And of course, I can do other steps as well. Another one is the Anki car. So Anki, Anki car over the drive is kind of a game. It's a Bluetooth fish, Bluetooth game that you control a car and you, you need a uh, race. And then because it's Bluetooth, you can get the data and you can analyze the data. So here is, I create a 
small code that gets the date of the car in real time. So we have position of car, velocity of the car, uh, position of the track and things like that. And I can do some analysis. I can uh, put the car for understand the track, create the best lap on the, the circuits, understand things like that. And then the other thing that I can use is the lead stripe itself. So lead stripe is exactly as the picture show. So a stripe that has a lot of LEDs, and then I can turn on and off, and can I use this. So more or less three years ago, I did the LED race. So the LED race is a game. So this video explains self-explanatory about the game, but the idea is kind of an auto runner of uh, LEDs. So you have buttons, and every time that, every time that you press the button, the LEDs go further once. So then you can have two or three players or four players, different colors, and then you, you press the button as fast as you can and the car goes forward. So the idea is that I have, on the top I have the LEDs. So every time that I press a button, I go further. Can be one, can be two or three, depends on the, the LEDs that you, you're using. And then I can control number of laps, the, the player that, you, do two laps first wins and then I, for example, in my in my example was red and green and then after two laps the first one, all the lights are green or all the lights are red indicated who was. So where I can add Kafka on that, so I can add Kafka there for maybe greater visualization if I want to show a fancy dashboard, velocity number of clicks per second and things like that more. Because the Raspberry Pi, the last version has eight gigs, I can even run Kafka on the Raspberry Pi. So the idea here is I have a, a LED stripe. My LED stripe has 60 LEDs per meter, and I have five meters, so I have uh, 300 LEDs. And then the idea is when the game starts, I have the, the player playing the button as fast as he can. But, uh, if you put this in a keyboard or if in a button, you have some kind of limitations. You're not able to do like three clicks per second. So you end up with average one or two clicks per second and takes around one or two minutes for give, I don't know, two or three laps, depends on how you set up. So the idea here is that I have two, uh, two registers, two records per second in a windows of one minute and a half or two minutes, and then I don't have anything. So the throughput here is quite small and I can run on Raspberry Pi. And then of course, the, everything can be Raspberry Pi. And it can be a cluster, it can be several ones. See, on the top here, I have the producer one and two or three, should be the, could be the players, player one, player two. I can build the, the game with up to four players. I can put more, but then, became difficult to see the colors and the colors overlap and things like that. Uh, I have, of course, I use the Kafka to control the, like, the stripe, but I can have the Kafka, the, I use the Raspberry Pi to control the stripe, but I can use the uh, Raspberry Pi to control the Kafka as well. As I said, the Kafka can be on the Raspberry Pi. I can have a cluster of one or two or three. I can have one specific for each player. So I have Raspberry Pi one, player one, Raspberry Pi two, player two. Can have zookeeper or without zookeeper in the version 2.8 or plus. And then I can have my consumer that get the data, generate fence boards or dashboards and things like that. Real time uh, data, of velocity, and things like that. Uh, best lab. And then we talk about the concept of uh, edge. So it's Kafka on the edge. And when I talk about Kafka on the edge, I mean it's Kafka clients and Kafka broker running on the Raspberry Pi itself. Of course, I can do a replication of this for uh, my computer, for a cloud, for whatever. But the, the, the main idea that is running on Kafka, as I said, the short, short period of time, less than two minutes, that I have a lot of uh, requests or submissions or records, and then I don't have anything. And I can create more nodes, one for each player, or two for each player, and things like that. And then, of course, I can replay it again. So the same idea that I did the tic-tac-toe, that I, I have the history, whatever that happens on that game, I can replay and he watch 
my light races as well. So I did the race, I saw the race, all the, the, the data is already in my stream, so I can just read again and replay it. So the concept here is the yellow uh, on the on top is the LED, the LED stripe. So I get the, the data from the LED stripe, I put on Kafka, and then on the other side, I consume that thing and I can do it again. So we end up with the same result. So this is, I'm not playing anymore, I'm just doing the replay. Whatever happens in the game is happening. Uh, another thing that I can do it is uh, when I click the button, I can do a lot of things. So click the button here, move the legs forward, click the button here, submit the, that I did the click for a Kafka prop. Player one, player two, and things like that. So I, I have the click itself, the player, I can have time, can have then I can calculate velocity, many clicks per second, uh, and things like that. And I can do dashboard. So here I can have the speeds, clicks per second. I can have the uh, uh, velocity of the, the lead, player one, player two. I can have best lap, I can track the lap, best lap, can have the best lap of the game, best lap of your all, and things like that. And of course, the same way that I have dashboards for the game, I can end up with a dashboard for the Kafka itself. So uh, can control here is a, a Grafana example, but can be anything. So I can have the, the information about my Raspberry Pi, memory, consumption, uh, number of messages, the time, and everything regarding uh, using the JVM metrics here to get information about Raspberry Pi. So then I can see if it's able to run in Raspberry Pi or not, should I increase the number of nodes or not? Can I, if I put just one for two players enough, or I need two, one for player one or one for player two, and things like that. And I can analyze and understand what's happened. And then on the top of that, I can add more ideas. So I can create other games based on the LEDs, Based on the heads that it has led, or based on the led stripe, I can add more ideas and create more games. So this is kind of idea that uh, I can follow up with more ideas, more games, and things like that. So one thing that uh, it's funny to realize here is number of message, the size of the message, the number of the message, and then megabytes per second. So here I create a table. Uh, uh, with a code that I was trying, like increase the number of the, uh, the size of the message against number of messages per second. So in the first line, I send five messages. Sorry, I I have a message of a size five KB, and then I end up with a thousand three hundred and sixteen messages. And after a uh, specific period of time, I manage to to calculate that I was with 6.42 uh, megabytes per second. And then of course, I increase to 10, number of messages decrease and things like that. And the last one you can see 750 messages. I have only messages and then I have eight. But if you look on the, the, the middle, like the 100 one, 100 one. So I have 98 messages and I have nine, Megas. So there is no correlation here, relation between the number of matches and the, num the matches per second. And on the end, like how many megabytes per second I can end up. So then we can create a game on top of that. And that game will teach you how to calculate or how to think in a fast way. Should I increase the number of messages? Or should I send less messages but with a bigger size? So imagine the game. Two players, web application that has two players. The application can show you the size, or the application can show you the number of messages. The application gives you 30 seconds for the site, and then in the 30 seconds, you need to read and try to fill a form regarding. How, what is the size of the message that you want to send? So, for example, imagine I receive, uh, I receive 
uh, a random number. So start with five. We have 30 seconds for the size, the size of the message for send uh, five megabytes per second. And then player one and player two decide the value. I decide one, decide three or whatever. And then once the 30 seconds finish, the game starts. So what the game are going to do is they are going to play the red race, but instead of the person playing the button, the game is going to play itself. And the, the leg is going to move. It means another message. And then you're going to, to see the velocity of the cars and who chose the best number is going to finish. So we end up with something like that. So here is red and green playing and the car is moving according to the number of uh, the size of the message. So the person who chose the best message for that value, here is uh, uh, a demo that I was playing, but the, the person who chose the best value is going to show. So if I come back here, so the idea is a game that two persons are playing and they need to choose the best size of a message for achieve a specific uh, value that came random in a megabyte, megabytes per set. And then the same way that I do for a message size, I can do, create a second game that is going to be message per second. So the game itself is going to ask you how many messages per second do you want? for a specific value. And it can be the opposite. It can be a toy game that is going to be the megabytes per second. So the game is going to say number of meshes, and then you're going to need to put the uh, megabytes per second. So I end up with three games that you choose, you, you receive a handle value, and then you need to choose. And based on the value that you choose, the game play itself. And when I say the game play itself, what's happening is, I created a message with that size and I submit it up to uh, that specific amount of uh, that I want. And then every message that I submit, every message that is consumed, it's an own position that the car goes. As I said, I have a lead stripe with uh, 60 LEDs in one meter. So if I use the five meters, I have 300 LEDs. So I end up doing some calculations regarding 300 divided by the size of meshes and things like that. Just for make sure that uh, when you send the entire messages, it's it's uh, one lap. So that game ends up when finish one lap. So a little bit complicated to understand the game, the concept of the game, but a, a simple GUI and a simple explanation of uh, how the game works. And I can teach you a lot, can teach a lot of uh, uh, information is about uh, event stream, Kafka, and how to calculate numbers of messages against message size against megabytes per second. And then the game, it's self explained So here in this video, I'm doing the demo that I use here, uh, Make It Make It. So Make It Make It is a, another board that you can simulate the clicks in a, in a contact list. So here I have a, a doodle, the, the play. So every time that I touch the thing, it simulates a, a, a click of the mouse, the keyboard. And of course, when you talk about keyboard, we have some uh, limitations. As I said, if you try to click as fast as I can, even if you manage to do it, maybe more than three clicks per second, so I'm not going to take in account because the keyboard has the limitation of three. So you end up with average one and two uh, records per second, but if you go really fast, perhaps you can achieve three. So Kafka, event stream, lead race, everything done in a really nice and a funny way. The idea that I explained here as I said, I create a game on the top of the game or top of the game. And of course you can came with more ideas and can create more games. It's kind of a without end idea. I saw people doing similar stuff regarding Apache Spark, Aka with the LEDs or the cluster to showing who is the leader, load balance and things like that, even with Kubernetes. 
And, uh, and the other thing is uh, all the code that, uh, all the demos that I show here and all the codes are going to be in my blog and my GitHub. So if it's not there, we'll be there. So be patient, one day we'll be there and uh, check out my blog as well because uh, the small projects became small blogs. So you can find me on IG, FA Souls, as I said, and uh, all social networks with that thing, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. You can find my uh, GitHub as well, the same. And at gmail.com is my email. And uh, my, my website and my blog, you're going to find all the information there. So uh, I want to say thank you for uh, the, the opportunity. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, I'm going to be on the chat for answer all the questions. So thank you. Bye-bye.